Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going over a script I created to Gamma and Delta Hedge options using the underlying symbol. So if you watched my previous video on Delta Hedging, this script will be very similar, except that I won't be calculating Delta and Gamma Hedges for all the options. Instead, what I've done is created a function where you insert a spread. So you will have to sell one options contract, doesn't matter if it's a call or a put. And then in order to gamma hedge, we're gonna have to buy another options contract in order to hedge the gamma. And then to hedge the delta, we're gonna use the underlying symbol. This first block you see is just to read in options data. And for this example, I'll be using the SPY ETF with the expiration date of March 26, 2021. But don't worry about this block. I'll go ahead and provide the options data for the SPY ETF. So what you'll have to do is reading those options contract using read RDS. So we'll go ahead and read the options contracts. The next step is to add an options ID, which will be made up of the strike price dash and whether it's a call or a put. This will help us locate the options contract we are passing into the function. So we'll go ahead and run that line. So in order for us to use this gamma delta hedge function, we need to pass in a couple of things. So we'll run through an example. So for this example, I want to hedge a vertical call spread and I'm selling the 396 strike and buying the 397 strike with 14 days to expiration. So these will satisfy all the parameters. So I'll go ahead and run this block. All right, so let's step into the function. So when you pass in your strikes and your options type, the first thing this function will do is create IDs for those options contracts, and then it'll subset our main data frame that has all the options to just those two contracts. So we'll go ahead and run these three lines. All right, the next thing we need to do is subset temp to include only those days to expiration less than or equal to the days of expiration we are passing in. So we'll go ahead and run that line. I will then extract the columns I need. So I'll go ahead and run the following line. So let's take a look at temp. So we have 22 entries and nine columns, and these are grouped by days to expiration. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we do have two entries for these contracts on expiration date but I started to notice that these contracts on expiration didn't have a price, but we can go ahead and add these prices by taking the difference of the stock close and the strike price. So that's what we will do next. So if we go back to our script, here you'll see some entries to fix the premiums at expiration. So it'll take into consideration whether it's a call or a put and whether it's in the money or out of the money. If it's out of the money, then the option will be worthless but if it's in the money, then we need to calculate the difference between the strike price and the close price. So we'll go ahead and run this block. All right, so the next thing we need to do is add those back to our data frame called temp. And then the next block of code is just taking the opposite side of the gamma, delta, and the mark price. And the mark price is just the option premium since we are short that first strike. So we'll go ahead and run that and it will assign everything to S1. So if you take a look at S1, we see that we are actually short the 396 strike because our option premium, our delta, and our gamma are negative. All right, so let's go back to our script. I will then extract the unique days to expiration found in our data frame in order for us to subset by days to expiration and make some calculations. So all the calculations are done in this block. So we are grouping by the number of days to expiration left. I'm setting that as a data frame and by default, we're using one contract. So one contract is essentially 100 shares. So we need to modify our delta and our gamma. All right, guys, so the next thing I'm going to do is hedge out the gamma of our first strike, and we're gonna use our second strike. So in order to find the number of contracts required to hedge out the gamma, we need to divide the gamma of our first strike. And notice this is negative since we're trying to hedge it out, and we're gonna divide that by the gamma of our second strike. But if the gamma of the second strike is zero, it will create an error. So if there's an error, then the number of contracts will be zero. And if you think about it, that's just because the second strike probably has a gamma of zero. So we can't use the gamma to hedge out the gamma of the first strike. Otherwise, just return the number of contracts we need to use to hedge out our gamma. And notice I'm rounding that to two decimal places. But in practice, we can't buy or sell fractional option contracts. So just keep that in mind. But I'm just going to leave it as is so that we can make sure that this is working properly. So in summary, gamma underscore H will just return the number of contracts we need to hedge out our gamma on the first strike. And since the number of contracts change, we need to adjust our deltas and our gammas for that second strike. So that's what these two lines are doing. All right, so now gamma should be hedged and we can verify that by adding gamma one and gamma two to get our net gamma 
Now the next thing we need to hedge out is our deltas. So we're going to use our underlying symbol. And to get the number of shares required, we're just going to add the delta of the first option and the delta of the second option. Now to verify that the delta is hedged, we're going to add the stock shares plus delta 1 and delta 2. So now we have our gammas and deltas hedged. The next couple of calculations are just to clean up a bit. So we're going to get the net premium of the options. If it's negative, it will be a credit. I'm going to combine everything together into a data frame. We're going to change the column names and then change some columns to numeric so we can easily make calculations. After that's done, we're just going to return that data frame called one. So we'll go ahead and run this block. All right, so short one should be a list and I want to turn it into a data frame. So I'm just going to row bind everything. I only want complete cases. So I'm going to use NA omit. So if we take a look at short one, so we have our short strike our long strike. And notice how the deltas have actually been modified. So here's our net premium each day. Here's our gamma for the first strike, the gamma for the second strike, the number of contracts of the second strike we need in order to hedge out our gamma. So our net gamma should be actually be zero for every single instance, but that's just because we're using fractional contracts, which works in theory, but not in practice. Now we have our deltas. So this is the strike one delta, strike two delta. So these are for the options and we're going to hedge those out by using stock shares. So these are the number of shares of the underlying symbol you will need. And if these are positive, that means you are long. And if they're negative, that means you are short. So our net deltas for each instance are zero. Here we have our stock price for each day, the stock value for each day, and the number of days to expiration. All right, so the next thing we are going to do is calculate our P&Ls. So if we go back to our script, here we're going to get the daily P&L of the stock and we're going to add it to that data frame. And we're also going to create an option P&L for our spread. So if we add the option P&L and the stock P&L, we get our gross P&L. And then the last thing I'm going to do is add a cumulative sum P&L for our gross P&L. So if we take a look at that data frame, so this is our stock P&L each day, our option P&L each day. So if we add those two columns, we get the gross P&L. And this is just the running total. So if we were allowed to actually use fractional option contracts, this would be our P&L. So you see that we're actually left with negative $2.83 throughout the 14 days. So this strategy is not used to actually make money. Instead, what it's used for is to hedge out any large price movements in our options or our stock. So we actually do see that by looking at our running totals as we do not see any large swings. And if we do, it'll be hedged out. All right, so let's go back to our script. So I'm actually going to plot this so that you see the differences. All right, guys, so here we have a plot. The red line symbolizes our PL on our option contracts. The green line represents the PL for the hedge options using our stock. And the black line is actually the stock price. So you see that our stock position actually lost money. Our options actually gain money. But if we use the hedge version, then we were essentially flatlining. So this is a visual representation of what I mentioned previously, where the strategy is just to minimize any large movements in the stock prices or the option prices. All right, so let's go back to our script. And the very last thing this function will do is return that data frame with our totals. All right, so I actually have another function here, and this function will just essentially plot the results. So I'll go ahead and minimize these two functions, and then I'll go ahead and run them. And we'll take a look at some examples. All right, so for our first example, we're gonna use a vertical put spread. And this is a credit spread, which is out of the money. So we're gonna sell the 392 strike and buy the 391 strike with 14 days to expiration. So we'll go ahead and run that. And then we'll go ahead and plot it. All right, so in this scenario, our options actually gained tremendously the last couple of days and the stock plummeted. But if we were to hedge out these options using the underlying symbol, then our PL would be kind of flatline, skewed a little bit to the negative side. 
All right, so for the next example, I'm gonna use another credit spread, but in this scenario, the credit spread is actually in the money. So we'll go ahead and run that. We'll take a look at the plot. All right, so in this scenario, it's kind of similar to the previous one. And we do see that if we were to hedge out our deltas and gammas, then our PL would be flatline instead of having these large swings. All right, so let's take a look at another example. Here I'm selling a put and buying a call. So I'm gonna sell the 390 put and I'm gonna buy the 393 call. So let's take a look at the plot. All right, so this one is a little bit more chaotic. So we do see that our hedge version is actually showing moderate swings. And in this case, or in this scenario, our hedge version actually ends up having a nice profit. All right, so we'll take a look at one more. And this will be a vertical debit spread using call options that ends up in the money. So we're gonna sell the 393 strike and we're gonna buy the 392 strike. So we'll take a look at the plot. So in this scenario, we see the large divergence between the stock and our options. But if we were to hedge out our gammas and deltas, then we wouldn't get this large divergence. All right guys, so this concludes the video. I hope this was useful information. I will post the link down in the description where you can get the script along with a sample of the SPY options. So you can run this and get a better glimpse of what's going on. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.